All right, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. And I'm going to ask Violet to unmute and welcome us into this space. Good morning, my friends. It's wonderful to see you today. I'm sure you all have plans for this beautiful day, this beautiful afternoon, but it's a good way to come together and worship our Lord. So I hope you enjoy this worship service and um, I welcome you here. And I also welcome those people that are watching on YouTube at your time of ch choosing. So now we're going to listen to the RIC statement, Reconciling in Christ statement, uh, recorded by Chris Radford. Hi, I'm Christine Radford, and I'd like to read our Community of Christ Church welcome statement, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. Community of Christ Church is an open and affirming Christian community who lives in God's love and grace. We strive to welcome and include all people because we believe God loves and welcomes all people, and we commit to work for racial justice in our church and the world. Regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, political stance or theological perspective, or anything else that might divide us, you are welcome here. What this means, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are young or old, you are welcome. If you have brown skin, black skin, white skin, or any color of skin, you are welcome. If you are married or partnered or single or divorced, you are welcome. If you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, asexual, aromantic, or straight, you are welcome. If you are male, female, transgender, intersex, or non-binary, you are welcome. If you cannot hear or see or speak, you are welcome. If you are sick or well, you are welcome. If you are happy or sad, you are welcome. If you are rich or poor, powerful or weak, you are welcome. If you believe in God some of the time or none of the time or all of the time, you are welcome. You are welcome here. Come with your gifts, your pain, your hope, your fears, Come with the traditions that have helped you and hurt you. Come with your experiences that have made you and broken you. Come with a mind ready to engage and a heart open to discern. Come and listen for the sacred spirit that calls you to love your neighbor wholeheartedly, seek justice, create peace, and practice compassion. You are welcome here. Community news. First up, we want to remind you of our commitment on the second and fourth Tuesdays to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church for their food pantry. Uh, they need two to four people each day, each of those two days a month. And it goes from 4.45 to 6.15, so that's just 90 minutes. And if you haven't uh, been trained officially, that's not a problem, just come and they can have pair you up with somebody who can show you what you need to do. You do need to RSVP if you're going to be able to serve on a particular day, and you can do that through our Faith News website or the, through the webpage. And um, so we recommend that you do that. If you have any questions, call Michael Gross and Pastor has some updates for us. Yes, thank you, Violet. Um, Michael sent me uh, a note because he is not able to be with us today and out of town. Um, and he said uh, that apparently he had incorrectly scheduled uh, the wrong dates on the sign up. Um, this month we're up for June 13th and 27th. He's corrected that on the calendar. 
so he asked me to mention that today. So if people are interested, please look at those dates to volunteer, uh, June 13th and 27th. He said, we only have one person uh, possibly signed up for June 13th, at least at, at the time of his writing the email, which was a couple days ago. And he'll be out of town, so he will not be able to be uh, one of those people. So 13th is, is one we're looking at. Um, but 13th and the 27th of June are the two sun, uh, Tuesdays, rather, that we're doing that. So thank you to Michael for coordinating all of this and for keeping us updated. So that's it. Thank you, Pastor. We have a Queer Grace meeting tonight at um, Spirit of Grace Church in Beaverton. Remember, this is the one where we have people from the um, LBGQTIA population who share their life stories and um, how it was when they came out and how they've been treated both by church and by their family and their wonderful insight in, into their lives and ideas of how way we can um, show them our support and love. So that's tonight at seven from seven to 830 at the Spirit of Grace. There is always a person who shares their life story. Tonight it's Andrew Shang and um, they invite you to come and hope to see you there. Pastor, do you have anything to add? No, that's uh, and that's what I'm sad to say I'm not able to attend. So I'm hoping that uh, others from Christchurch will come and, and represent. Um, um, and always sad when I can't make those, but um, it sounds amazing. And it is a wonderful opportunity um, uh, to hear wonderful stories and to just learn more. So, um, yep, thank you to Spirit of Grace for um, starting that um, Queer Grace Gathering um, program and, and continuing it, so. And then don't forget that um, three weeks from today, we're going to be meeting at the Jacks or Jackson River Wetlands, I think. Um, Jackson in, Bottom. Jackson Bottom. And there's uh, more information in Faith News, so you can read up about it. We're going to be voting on the 23-24 fiscal year budget for Christ Church and also the church council slate. You'll be electing a new uh, secretary since I have served my four years. And uh, Inga has uh, volunteered to be, or accepted the nomination to be uh, on the slate for church council. And she's actually going to have to do double duty because she'd be replacing both Mark and myself. So good luck to her. Anyway, it's uh, June 25th. The meeting will be after the worship service that morning. So put that on your calendar and we hope to see you there. And happy birthday to Heather Davis and to Cindy Kinney and Tracy, Tracy Litterer. Um, happy birthday to all of you. You're born in wonderful months where we have nice weather so you can get outside and have a picnic or a hike or something to enjoy the great outdoors. Have a good day. Violet, I got a note from Steve uh, in the chat asking if if this might be an opportunity to for um, for he and Joseph to share a little bit about um, the gifts that Christchurch has sent to uh, the elementary school in Joseph's town. Joseph, is is this a good time, or should we plan that for next week? How would you like to do that? I'm putting you hello, on. The hello, everyone. Hi, I'm putting you on the Hi. spot. So if, if you want to wait till next week, we can do that. But if you've got, I want to tell us a little bit about um, how the gifts are being used and all of that. That'd be great. Yes. Uh, I, uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you. It is unfortunate that I have not been able to uh, join you for two Sundays, but I'm happy this day that I am able to join with you. Uh, God bless you so much. What I would like to say is that uh, the fund that has been sent, we have received it, and we, we are planning to send uh, a letter tomorrow and uh, a receipt to the same. So uh, please, I would like you to allow me to do a letter of Thanksgiving and uh, 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 tomorrow or Tuesday, which will include all the information that uh, you would like to, to have concerning the, the funds. Thank you, Joseph. And we will we will share that with the congregation. And um, I appreciate you. And I'm so glad to have you have you back. We've missed you um, last couple of times. Thank you. 
Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. All right. I'm going to ask Violet to uh, unmute and lead us in the prayer of the day and also um, our first two readings. Okay. First, let us pray. Oh, God of the universe, you are so mighty, and yet you care for us so tenderly. Thank you for your great love that embraces both men and women, rich and poor, single people and those with families, people of different ages, people of different ethnic backgrounds and religious traditions, people who live in different parts of the world. May your never ending love so fill our lives in worship that we might freely share your love with others. Amen. And from the book of Genesis, we have several short readings. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth became chaos and emptiness. Darkness came over the face of the deep, yet the spirit of God was brooding over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image to be like us. Let them be stewards of the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, the wild animals, and everything that crawls on the ground. Humankind was created as God's reflection. In the divine image, God created them, male and female. God made them. God blessed them and said, bear fruit, increase your numbers, and fill the earth and be responsible for it. Watch over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things on the earth. God then told them, look, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit carries its seed inside itself. They will be your food. And to all of the animals of the earth and the birds of the air and things that crawl on the ground, everything that has a living soul in it, I give all the green plants for food. So it was. God looked out at all of this creation and proclaimed that this was good, very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. On the seventh day, God had finished all of the work of creation. And so on that seventh day, God rested. God blessed the seventh day and called it sacred because on it, God rested from all of the work of creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. And from the book of Corinthians, we have two verses from chapter 13. And now, sisters and brothers, I must say goodbye. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Live in harmony and peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones send greetings to you. The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you, Violet. Um, our worship continues with a song from our worship team and invite you to stay muted and to sing along.
satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up Never runs out on me Your love Thank you to our worship team. Our worship continues now with the hearing of God's word in scripture. I read uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, and I am reading uh, in the First Nations version, an indigenous translation of the New Testament. And I mention that because uh, one of the things that I love about this translation, um, is a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the names are um, are revealed as the the meaning of the names. So, for instance, Jesus is Creator sets free, and you'll see the names uh, that we're familiar with in parentheses. But I will just read the the meanings um, that are in the text. Also. Um, the the first nations version um kind of uh, inserts some uh kind of fills in the gaps between passages with kind of setting the stage and the context of what's happening uh so uh you'll notice that in uh it'll be in italics and also have like a green line next to it to kind of set it apart so with that i read from the gospel of matthew the 28th chapter starting with the 16th verse It was now time for Creator Sets Free to return to the spirit world above. It had now been 40 days since he had come back to life again. So he gathered his followers one last time to give them their final instructions. 
The remaining 11 of his followers journeyed to Circle of Nations. There at the mountain where Creator Sets Free had told them to go, they met with him. When they saw him, they gave to him the honor he deserved. But there were some who still doubted. All the authority of the spirit world above and the earth below has been given to me, he told them. So now I am sending you into all nations to teach them how to walk the road with me. You will represent me as you perform the purification ceremony with them, initiating them into the life of beauty and harmony, represented in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You will then teach them all the ways that I have instructed you to walk in. Creator sets free, then looked into their faces with love and great affection. He lifted his hands toward them and spoke these final blessing words over them. Never forget, he said, as he began to rise up into the spirit world above. I, I will always be with you, your invisible guide, walking beside you until the new age has fully come. This is God's good news for us today. Amen. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our friend and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So today is Trinity Sunday. And I thought, what better way, uh, what would any good preacher do on Trinity Sunday than use this time to explain fully the doctrine of the Trinity? I can't see all your faces, but I'm hoping some of you are laughing because that was a joke. I am not going to spend my time trying to describe the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, first of all, I don't know that anyone fully agrees on all of it. You know, the bottom line is that we have one God revealed to us in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's that's the the short answer, but that is not in any way explaining fully the meaning of that doctrine. So no, I am not going to try to explain to you the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, not going to try to show you all the metaphors and analogies used to explain it. Um, those have always really fallen short for me. I mean, water, ice, and steam, really? Um, come on. There's, uh, there's got to be a better way to talk about this. Um, Father Richard Rohr says it well in the book of the Divine Dance. He says, all theological language is an approximation. We can say the Trinity is like or it's similar to, but we can never say it is because we're in the realm of beyond, of transcendence and of mystery. And we must absolutely maintain a fundamental humility before that great mystery. So I'd like to invite us into that mystery of the doctrine of the Trinity. I don't know about you, but I've seen Christianity practiced in a variety of ways. I've seen it reduced to very individualistic practices, a privatizing of the faith, if you will, into kind of a me and God formulation. I've also seen a very dualistic approach to faith and to our understanding of God and playing out in a variety of ways. One of those is comparing the so-called wrathful God of the Old Testament with the more loving and forgiving God of the New Testament, when in reality, a careful reading of both Testaments shows plenty of evidence of an Old Testament God who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and to passages where Jesus describes God in very harsh and judging ways, as in the parable of the sheep and the goats. There is a mixture of both in these uh, two Testaments. So, I would like the concept of the Trinity to help us push past individualistic understandings of our faith or dualistic uh, understandings toward a relational and a communal practice that invites us into the mystery that is God for all people in all times. The doctrine of the Trinity invites us into a plurality, more than one more than two, three takes us into community beyond individualism and dualism. And you know, maybe there are more than three and we just don't yet have the language for that. Because you see, the truth is, is that 
um, this is not a case of God saying, handing down from on high, this is how you are to understand me in three persons. And then we try to make sense of that. No, rather it is over the centuries, our experiences of God, taking time to reflect on those experiences. And then to try to put it in some sort of language. How we've experienced God, God's revelation, incarnation, transcendence, noticing that there seem to be these three particular ways that God has shown up for us. Holy parent, holy child, holy spirit. And the truth is, is that even then, these are not sharply defined. They overlap. I once uh, laid a piece of rope down on the ground uh, to represent a timeline from the beginning of time on to the future and beyond. And I asked a group of, of youth from this congregation to point to the timeline, to the rope, point to where God the Father shows up, point to where God the Son shows up, where God the Holy Spirit shows up in, in our scriptures and in our understanding of history. And as you might expect, God the Father, God Creator, shows up at the beginning, at the, at, at the one end of the timeline. Jesus shows up somewhere in the middle, and Holy Spirit shortly after, like the Pentecost story, where the Spirit is given to the disciples to go out and preach. But then we started to read some different passages, and we noticed, like the passage that Violet read for us today, the Spirit of God brooding over the surface of the waters. That's verse 2 of chapter 1 of Genesis. The Holy Spirit shows up at the beginning. And then there's Jesus, described as the Word of God in John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. Not one thing came into being without the Word, without Jesus. So now Jesus also shows up at the beginning, and we begin to see that the three persons of the Trinity are weaving and overlapping in this communion and this relationship and this community. And what are we to make of the phrase of Gen in Genesis creation story that says, let us make humankind in our image to be like us? Could God's pronouns be they, them? Trinity, as I said, is about human beings over the centuries trying to make sense of their experience of God of the way that God has shown up for us in our lives and in our world, an ecosystem, if you will, of mutuality, cooperation, collaboration, and love. God is not just about wanting to be in relationship. God's very nature is relationship, community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together in love and cooperation and mutuality with one another. How has God shown up for you in your life? How does God show up in the world? Another part of this that is important, I think, is to understand that we are God's church. We are, uh, we are God's reflection, as in Genesis, God's reflection created in the divine image. And so we are also, and we're also part of this church founded in the name of the triune God. So we are also called to show up for the world in a variety of ways. God shows up in bringing beauty out of chaos. God shows up into leading us from slavery and bondage into liberation and freedom. God shows up for us in forgiveness and reconciliation. God shows up for us in striving for justice and peace in our world. And being the body of Christ, being God's church 
we are also called to show up in a variety of ways because each of us brings our own unique gifts and we're called to be part of that communal relationship that is so wonderfully expressed in the Trinity. So we bring different gifts. Some of us show up with uh, a listening ear and a, a casserole or hot dish when someone is grieving or has been in the hospital. Some of us show up in the world at school board meetings and city council meetings and legislative sessions, striving, asking for policies to change that might be more humane for our world. Some of us show up through the power of prayer, the power of presence. Some of us show up by getting our hands dirty, building houses, digging into garden community gardens that feed people. Some of us show up by uh, accompanying people through a food pantry to, um, to make sure that people get fed, to deliver food to people's doors. There are so many ways that we can show up. I want to tell you just one brief story of how I saw God show up uh, yesterday. Yesterday was the Hillsborough Pride party, and um, Ron and I got down there a little after noon, and uh, we're walking around, and I went over to the Westside Queer Resource Center booth to say hi to my friends, uh, uh, who are Jenna and Danielle, who are on the board, uh, and who were staffing the table, and we were talking about how the day was going, what a beautiful day it was, and all the people who had stopped by the booth, and and then Jenna pointed across the way to another booth and said, see that booth over there? That's the, that's the Unitarian Universalist Church. Uh, they have a booth there. And um, they came over and brought us a little flyer. And on June 11th, they're having a, a, a pride worship and uh, an ice cream social. And it's going to be a fundraiser. And she said, you know what? Um, all the proceeds of that fundraiser are going to us, to the West Side Queer Resource Center. And um, and she said we didn't we didn't ask them to do that. They uh, didn't uh, they didn't talk to us ahead of time. They just made that decision to do that because they wanted to support folks in our community to feel uh, belonging and welcome and love and acceptance in our community. So I had the chance to walk over and and say thank you to them and introduce myself to them and and just say I'm I'm part of the board and I just heard what you're doing and I think it's so wonderful and um and they just shared their stories of like you know we just um we want to see faith communities um show up for uh our LGBTQ siblings in our community and that's why we're doing this to me, that's the way that one of one of the many ways, one of the myriad of ways that God shows up through us. So the doctrine of the Trinity for me is such an important doctrine because it reminds us that God is communal, God is relational, that God shows up in a variety of different ways, that we can't pin God down to just one way of acting or being in the world. Um, but that ultimately all of those expressions, all of those persons of the Trinity, of who God is, is about love, is about grace, is about sharing the good news that all are loved and all are cherished by the God who created us. Amen. Our worship continues now with an opportunity to uh, share the piece and um, check in with your neighbor. Um, so we've created some breakout rooms and invite you to um, uh, chat with your neighbor. No, no particular prompt for this, just uh, an opportunity to, to hang out and to share the piece. So um, I'm going to say to you all, the peace of Christ is with you. So with you. Amen. And I uh, remind you that if you prefer to stay in the um in the 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 room that is supposed to be called sanctuary, but actually is called David Eppelsheimer, um, 
And uh, if you wanted to stay there, there will be music and images for uh, your contemplation. And um, we'll bring you back in 10 minutes. So we'll see you then. Welcome back. I invite Violet to unmute and lead us in the prayers of God's people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here today to draw closer to you and to learn of how you want us to live our lives. To learn not just how to say the words of inclusiveness and how to love your neighbor, but how to incorporate them into our daily lives. Some of us are afraid to step, step into the practice and speak out for the marginalized because we don't want to offend. At those times, remind us it is far worse to offend you than it is to offend whomever we might be concerned about. We ask that you teach us how to love and care for others on a 24-7 basis, not just Sunday mornings. Let the days of our lives show our love and devotion to you that others might choose to follow your path. We acknowledge that we are your people. Give us the will and desire to act like that each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We want to thank you for these days of beautiful weather. Days like these, we can enjoy the beauty of your creation everywhere we look. The beauty of your flowers and trees, the lushness of your grass and forest. It all combines to serve as a reminder of just how great you are. Remind us to take the time to take a breath, to smell the roses, to enjoy all of nature's beauty. We get so busy with our daily lives that we get lost in the details and miss the big picture. Your love and care for us shows in all that surrounds us. And we ask that you'd remind us to take time to enjoy what we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. This week and next are exciting times for our youth. As they graduate from high school and college, they'll soon be taking major steps of independence. We ask that you watch over them and keep them safe. It's hard to let them go and watch them falter, but this too is part of being a parent, not just teaching what mistakes to avoid, but more importantly, how to recover once you've made some. Please stay with them as they venture forth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do God's children pray? For all the uh, parents and um, guidance people who have watched the youth and they're making that transition that um, they relax a little bit because it's a very hard transition for parents as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our uh, prayer. Pray. Father, we know you know of our concerns and worries, all of our concerns and worries, whether spoken aloud or whispered in our hearts and minds. We lift these and all other matters up to you and are so thankful that you are in our corner. We ask for these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Violet. Our worship continues now with our offering. Um, being, it's an opportunity to give on our giving button on our website. Um, the link will go in the chat. And um, this is also an opportunity to bring your communion elements close by and um, stay muted as we sing along with the worship team, You Are the Seed.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our friend and savior. Amen. 
In the night in which was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord taught. Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, name. your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence. You have nourished us with words of mercy, and you have fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with a willing spirit and honor the earth that you have made. Through your chosen one, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. And now receive the benediction. God, the source of glory. God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stay muted and to sing along with our worship team for our sending song, Salt and Light.
Go in peace to love and serve our God. Be to God. Thanks be to God.